warns you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And one of the things that frustrates me as an American citizen more than uh, just about anything else is that so often we see situations, we see uh, issues come up in our world to which the solution, the answer, is completely obvious. As obvious as a nose in your face. And instead of just saying, well, that's messed up. Here's what we got to do about it. Let's do it. Instead, so many times we take these seemingly obvious situations and find ourselves getting bogged down in legalities and procedures and due process and so on and so forth. We see so many issues to where we know it's wrong instinctively. And instead of doing what's necessary to correct it in an immediate fashion, well, we start worrying about how those who would try to destroy our nation, uh, how, how, we're, uh, how we're treating them. And, and, and if we're giving them their, their full set of rights, and if we're, we're giving them enough consideration. I think of a couple of examples here recently. I think of what's going on overseas with ISIS and militant Islam. We've got people over there beheading Americans, beheading Christians, and yet there are people out there worried about well what if you put american boots on the ground or what if you what if you accidentally kill civilians wouldn't that be horrible not compared to the fact that they're beheading americans it wouldn't be horrible but oh no no you can't talk about that you're forced to consider the impact we have on them even though they're beheading us look at ferguson missouri just a 10 minute drive from where we tape this show look at ferguson missouri we've got people who are out there practically every night protesting, who are throwing objects at police, throwing Molotov cocktails at police, shooting at police. Heck, we even had another situation. By the way, those of you who are outside the St. Louis area, you may have think you may think Ferguson has gone away or quieted down. It is not. We still have protests and violence going on at least two or three nights a week. It's just not make, making the national news anymore. But we had a situation last week outside of Ferguson down in of what we call the Shaw neighborhood in South St. Louis where uh, some thug went and tried to shoot a police officer. Police officer defended himself, shot the thug dead, and just like Ferguson, suddenly out of the woodwork, here comes all these protesters upset and threatening violence and, and destroying property, and one of them even burned a flag because the police officer defended himself. And so we have this violence, this looting, this attacking police officers trying to kill them in cold blood in the middle of the streets, and yet we're supposed to worry if those people are having their constitutional rights upheld? Really? Seems to me like in cases like this, the priorities are just a little bit messed up. Okay, they're a lot messed up. Let's be clear. Ferguson and ISIS have something very important in common. Now, don't worry. I'm not getting ready to go all Alex Jones on you and give you some grandiose conspiracy theory. No, no, no. What they have in common, I'm pretty sure that neither group has any idea of. But there's one thing they have in common. Ferguson and ISIS have this in common. Both are movements whose main goal, whose main initiative, is to upset the apple cart of American culture, of Western culture, to bring transformative change, where have we heard that term before, to American civilization as we know it. Now granted, both of them are doing it for far different reasons. What that change would end up being looks very different to both of those groups but nevertheless both groups are attacking america because they see in us something that needs to be changed something that needs to be overturned something that needs to be replaced and do we really need to give people like that the benefit of the doubt when it comes to constitutional protections or legal protections or do we need to stop them at all costs it seems to me that the answer is the latter and not the former i think back to something that president john adams once said way 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 back in the early days of America. John Adams said this, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Well, certainly what I'm seeing out of ISIS and out of Ferguson, 
uh, is anything but a moral and religious people. I know there's clergy involved in the in the Ferguson thing, but I can tell you the things they're preaching are nothing like the things I heard in church growing up. So I have my doubts how religious they are. But that judgment aside, the bottom line is, is that as great as our legal protections are, as great as our Constitution is, as great as our system of government is, which, frankly, comparing it to the rest of the world and world history, is the greatest form of government that's ever been devised, nevertheless, that form of government, that Constitution, is not a magic elixir. Our Constitution, our legal traditions, our form of government is only worthwhile when applied to a moral and religious people. It can be, just like any other form of, of government, form of civilization, can be completely destructive when taken over by those who are immoral or those who are not based in Christian belief and Christian behavior. I mean, think of this. When you've listen to the Ferguson protesters, if you tried to listen to their arguments, in the rare case that they do put a cohesive sentence together, what do all of their arguments seem to, to, to focus on? What's the one central theme of every argument you hear out of Ferguson? The central theme is about making it easier to commit crimes. That's what everything boils down to. You haven't once heard any of those Ferguson protesters say, you know what, what Mike Brown did was wrong, but they completely skip over that. They assume that a guy going in and robbing a liquor store and attacking a police officer is just, well, that's normal behavior. That's an everyday thing, isn't it? The problem is the reaction to it in their minds. You never hear people say, all those apologists for the Middle East, you never hear them say, okay, ISIS shouldn't be beheading people, but... No, they try to say that, well, we got to have a coalition government over there, and we got to make sure all voices are represented. No! Not all voices deserve to be represented. President John Adams knew that. Some voices are destructive. They do not deserve a seat at the table. And yet, what do we see in Ferguson? We see the federal government coming in and demanding and putting on little uh, dog and pony shows. Well, actually, they call them town hall meetings. They put on little town hall meetings where these violent protest. There is no such thing as a peaceful protest over in Ferguson when the bottom line of every protest is that they're defending someone who attacked a police officer. By definition, that cannot be a peaceful protest. The very thing they're protesting in favor of is violence. And on occasion, they actually resort to it. So you're allowing people like that to have a seat at the table so that their grievances can be heard. And we can consider their point of view. But if you're protesting in favor of someone who attacks police officers and tries to kill them, there's no basis for your opinion being heard. Your opinion's worthless. It does not need to see the light of day. And we as a society must do whatever we can, whatever we must, to keep that type of drivel, to keep that type of ideology from seeing the light of day in America. Then all these pushes in Ferguson to Sign people up to vote. One of them said that they signed up 3,000 people, and then it came out a couple days later, something like 150. I guess that whole felons can't vote thing kind of bit you in the ass, didn't it? But in any case, people are looking at, at signing people up to vote as though that would resolve some of these issues in Ferguson, and I don't see where that's the case. Because when you've got people who have no morality... When you've got people who do not believe in the Christian values, Western values, American values that the rest of us live our lives around, then how can their input at the ballot box have any sort of positive impact whatsoever? And really, you've got to look no further than a lot of our major cities like Detroit, like uh, Chicago, like even the city of St. Louis just a few miles away here, to see areas where it's been democratically controlled for decades and decades, where all of these you know, poor and supposedly oppressed people have uh, have been in power forever. They've been the ones doing all the voting. You go to St. Louis, there virtually is not a Republican Party there. It's been dominated by these race hustlers and, and do-gooders and liberals for decades. And look how those cities look. Look what squalor they're in. Look how the poverty and the crime just goes up and up and up and there's never a light at the end of the tunnel. That's what happens when these people dominate the ballot box. And now that's what will solve the problems in Ferguson? I think not. Likewise, when we look at ISIS, we look at the Middle East, 
you know, we were told for so long, and, and this is something I'm going to criticize George W. Bush on. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a. This is something that even our own side gets a little bit of criticism on from me. You know, we went into Iraq, which was which was the right thing to do, but we focused just on establishing democracy there. We we focused just on establishing our former government, but we did not go so far as to correct their culture. And we saw in living proof in Iraq exactly what John Adams said was that democracy or a constitutional government or, or a government that's similar to ours, a representative republic, without a religious and moral people can only be destructive. You see, democracy is not a magic elixir. Our constitution is not a magic elixir. The ballot box is certainly not a magic elixir. Instead, what needs to be done is not worrying about the rights and the impact on these people who would destroy us. What needs to be done instead is what I call cultural cleansing. Both of these groups, Ferguson and ISIS, in very different ways, represent cultures that are destructive and cultures that must be brought to their knees and eliminated from this world. Cultures that must be transformed into the type of American culture that you and I live our lives for. A cultural cleansing. A focus in both cases on assimilating them into normal American, Western, Christian values first and foremost before any consideration should be made towards encouraging them to take any kind of part in the, in the American government or before in the terms of the Middle East that we should give them any kinds of consideration for their own well-being or for their own comfort. Dissent is one thing. We tolerate that in America. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it goes to the end of protecting the so-called rights of those who wish to destroy America, and make no mistake, the people in Ferguson want to destroy America. The people in the Middle East, the Muslims, they want to destroy America. Again, for different reasons, from different perspectives, different outlooks. But the end result of both are the same. Both of them look at America and say, that needs to end. They say it's immoral, it's unjust. When in fact, America has been the most just and moral and upright society and, and civilization that the world has ever known. If they don't understand that, then we must make them understand that. And we need to set aside legalities. We need to set aside constitutional protections. We need to have leaders who are courageous enough to look the other way while we do whatever is necessary to assimilate them into this proper way of thinking that has built America. You know, I, I've had some pretty radical ideas. I put it there in social media lately. Things like, things like uh, shutting down elections in Ferguson for a 10-year period. I think that would be a smart thing to do. Things like... Maybe re-education camps for those who are protesting right now. Because clearly they cannot take part in American society with their values such as they are intact as they are today. Maybe banning the Democratic Party from operating in Ferguson. Maybe allowing only political activity from the Republican side there for maybe a period of 10 or 20 years. That would help. Now... Are those things necessarily legal? No. But maybe maybe our leaders need to take the time to either change the laws or do whatever maneuvering is necessary to make it happen nonetheless. In closing, I would say this. It is society's job to run government. It is not government's job to run society. And if the government we have, you know, there's no, there's no set of government, there's no set of rules, there's no set of laws that a human being can come up with that would be perfectly capable of taking into account every possible issue that you could ever come up with, every possible problem you can encounter. And I think we need to be smart enough to realize that. And so it's time for society to stand up and say, we don't care what you have to do to put down the rebellion in Ferguson. Do it! And convert those people to a right way of thinking. We don't care what you have to do in the Middle East to protect us and keep us safe. Do it! And keep Americans safe and convert the Middle East to a pro-Christian, pro-Western way of life. If you got to use nuclear bombs, do it. Nuke them to hell! If you got to go into Ferguson with tanks and armored vehicles and machine guns and anything else, flamethrowers, and set them all on fire, blood flowing through the streets, do it! Because in the long run, that's the only way we can protect America. You people on both 
the Ferguson and ISIS side have declared war on America. It's time we realize it. It's time we stand up and it's time we do anything necessary by any means necessary as some of you people might say. By any means necessary we must do what it takes to assimilate you into American culture. Everybody's worried about the rights of people that shoot police officers. What about the rights of those of us who are property owners? What about the rights of those of us who are law-abiding citizens? What about the rights of those who own businesses? What about the rights of those of us who actually contribute to American society unlike you people who are protesting in Ferguson? Unlike you Muslims who attack us? We're the only ones who deserve those rights. You haven't earned them yet. But you can earn them. You can earn them if you assimilate into American culture. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius, Travis Cook. We will see you next time.